This simple looking device you're seeing right now is a rocket flight computer. Its main job is to safely bring the rocket back by deploying a parachute. And it also logs all the flight data inside this eight gigabyte SD card. If you've been following me for a while, then you already know that I'm working on my first ever rocket project, learning everything from the internet. And this little piece of tech is built specifically for that rocket. But if you're new to all this, make sure to watch this full video because I'll be talking about all the mistakes I made while assembling, buying, and testing parts for the flight computer. I'll also share how I ended up spending a bit more than I expected on this project. This video is going to be really fun. There are a bunch of cool things to show, and I'll also be unboxing some new parts and a brand new microcontroller. So let's start the video. So before starting the video, I want to tell you that I'll be calling this flight computer silly. That's the name I decided for this project. And please don't give me any better name suggestions in the comments. A while ago, I posted a video where I unboxed all the parts for the flight computer. I showed a bunch of different components like the altitude sensor, SD card module, MOSFET, and the Pico itself. I chose the Raspberry Pi Pico for this flight computer because it's very fast and reliable compared to others. But at that time, I didn't know that it's a logic level controller, and that small detail ended up costing me a lot. I assembled everything and tested it, and found out that only the BMP280 altitude sensor was working with the Pico. After that, I bought a new MOSFET, which was quite expensive, connected it to the Pico, and discovered that it still wasn't the right one. After some time, I realized the problem was with the Pico's logic level. It can only work with components that operate at the same logic level. Meaning, if the Pico runs at 3.3 volts, then all the other modules should also be compatible with that 3.3 volt range. But all the parts I bought were designed to work at 5 volts. The only one that worked properly was the BMP280, because it operates within that 3.3 volt logic level. Forgive me if I say something wrong. I'm still new to all this stuff. Once I finally understood the logic level problem, I got new parts that could easily work at 3.3 volts. The order arrived, and it was time to assemble Silly. I took two double-sided perf boards and joined them together to get a larger surface area, then started adding all the parts onto the boards. At that time, I didn't realize that the SD card module I had wasn't meant for 3.3 volts so I added it anyway. It was removed a few days later. I used a bunch of wires and connected everything together, and honestly, I wasn't proud of those connections. I thought I could leave the wiring as it was, but someone told me that they wouldn't survive the G-forces of a rocket launch. Once all the connections were done, Silly was ready for testing. I plugged it into my PC and ran some test codes. It became clear that I still needed to do more work. Only the BMP280 was working. So I removed the old parts and replaced them with new ones. As soon as the new components arrived, I installed them on Silly and tested everything again. This time, the MOSFET was working perfectly, but the SD card module still wasn't responding. I even tested a motor as a load, and it worked quite well with that setup. After accidentally blowing up a few motors, I got back to testing Silly, and this time, I found out that everything was finally working. It hadn't worked last time, only because of an SD card library issue. Once I fixed that, Silly was able to log data to the SD card perfectly. As you can see, I ran a few small tests on the flight computer using a LiPo battery. After the test, I removed the SD card from the flight computer, connected it to my PC, and looked at that beautiful looking data. The data generated by Silly looked amazing, but Silly itself didn't look that great. To make it look better and more reliable, I decided to strengthen all the connections, since those loose wires wouldn't survive the high G-forces of a rocket, just like that person had warned me. So I removed the wires one by one and started making copper traces by stripping the insulation off the wires and tinning the copper threads. Then I carefully began reconnecting everything. 
One by one, I made copper traces and soldered them, trying to keep every turn at a 45 degree angle, just like we do when designing a PCB. It took me quite a while to finish all the connections, and at some points, I even had to place one copper trace over another, basically creating a two-layer PCB. To do that, I covered the upper trace with heat shrink, and it worked really well. After around 40 hours, Silly was finally complete. 40 hours because, well, I'm a little lazy. Connections near the MOSFET look pretty messy, but they work just fine. Oh, I almost forgot to mention the step-up module. I added a step-up module to Silly because the battery I'm using is a small single cell, 3.7 volts, 1000 milliamp hours, 30 C LiPo, and that battery by itself isn't powerful enough to fire an igniter. The step-up boosts the 3.7 volts up to around 18 to 20 volts, which is enough for the job. The current needs to be high enough for the igniter, but I don't need huge current because I'm planning to use a simple homemade igniter. There's also a capacitor on Silly connected between the step-up module and the MOSFET, and all that power goes into the igniter through this blue screw terminal. I can adjust the output voltage depending on the igniter I use by turning the tiny potentiometer screw on the step-up module. Now take a little break and think about how this could be improved. Right now, Silly is simple and easy to assemble. But what if I switched to a proper PCB? One of my subscribers suggested ordering a PCB and said it would only cost a few dollars. He was right. A simple two-layer PCB would be cheaper in parts, but I can't ignore the shipping charges. Buying PCBs from abroad gets expensive, and Indian PCB manufacturers usually price small runs from around 500 rupees to 1,000 rupees. By contrast, a perf board costs me only about 40 to 70 rupees. I'd love to use a PCB because it would be more reliable, but for a small, low budget project like Silly, perf board makes more sense for now. I'll stick with perf board until I have more money to upgrade to a proper PCB. Now let's test Silly. I ran the test code and everything was connected properly and responding well. I tested the altitude sensor, data logging system, and the igniter setup. I did get a few small errors during testing, but those were caused by some library issues, which I fixed along the way. First, I wrote a program where Silly's on board, well, actually the Pico's on board. LED would blink four times if everything on Silly was working correctly and would blink rapidly if the Pico detected any errors. As you can see, whenever I power on Silly, the LED blinks to confirm that everything is fine, and it would blink rapidly if an error was found. After that, I made another program, well, technically ChatGPT helped me write it, in which the MOSFET fires whenever Silly detects that it has gone above two meters in altitude. I connected a small decorative light bulb to simulate the igniter and gave it a test. It worked perfectly, which means Silly can now deploy a parachute for a safe landing. During the MOSFET test, all the flight data was being logged onto the SD card. And here's that data. Now Silly's completely ready. Not as beautiful as a proper PCB version, but definitely good enough to fly into the blue sky. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Wait, it's not over yet. I also promised you guys an unboxing, so don't leave. Here's the box. There are a few parts inside, and one of them is this, a load cell amplifier. I bought it because I've been thinking about building a load cell setup for motor testing. Next up is this logic level shifter. It can be used when I need to connect a 5 volt component to a 3.3 volt microcontroller. I could also use it to fix logic level issues with the Pico but that would make Silly a bit bigger, so I'll probably use it in the load cell project instead if needed. The next item is a capacitor, which is already mounted on Silly. And now for the main item for the load cell, this is an ESP8266 Node MCU microcontroller with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It looks way cooler than the Pico, and that black color gives it such a nice finish. 
I tried installing MicroPython on it, but it works a bit differently than the Pico. So I couldn't get it running yet, but I'll fix that soon. Now I can finally end this video. If you've watched this far, thank you so much. And if you guys want to know where to buy these parts, or want a full tutorial video on Silly, just comment down below. I'll make that video very soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.